dearest Jesus, as I read your promises to your people, I pray that your blessed presence will come upon each heart. I pray that your peace will fill every life. Dearest Lord, may your word fill our hearts richly, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. The Lord has put it on my heart to read you some of his promises that he might use his word to bless you again and again and again. For remember, his promises are yea and amen. And my prayer is as I read these promises that the Holy Spirit himself will minister to you. Jeremiah 31 and verse 3 declares, The Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Remember, he loves you. He loves you dearly. John chapter 13 and verse 1 declares, Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew, that his hour was come that he should depart out of this world unto the Father. Having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. His everlasting love is everlasting. It's not only for now, it's forever. Having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. And so the word declares in Romans chapter 8, beginning at verse 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, For thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And Ephesians chapter 3, beginning at verse 14, the Word of God declares, For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his Spirit, in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and the length and the depth and height and to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us, unto him 
be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. And the one who loves you will never condemn you. That is why Psalm 103 declares, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executeth righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and plenteous in mercy. He will not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. For he knoweth our frame, he remembereth that we are dust. The one who loves you is the same one who will never condemn you. He is the one who always forgives you. That's why in Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 18, he declares, Come now, and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. All we have to do is come to him. And he promises again in Isaiah 43, verse 25 and 26. I, even I, am he that blotteth out thy transgressions for mine own sake and will not remember thy sins. Put me in remembrance. Let us plead together. Declare thou that thou mayest be justified. What a loving and forgiving Lord Jesus is. In John chapter 8, we have the story. And early in the morning, he came again into the temple and all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman, taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery, in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? This they said, 
tempting him, that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground, as though he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. They which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. And Paul the Apostle in Romans 8 verse 1 tells us this, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. All we have to do is come to the Master and will find forgiveness and love. So the Word declares in 1 John 1 verse 7, If we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanseth us from all sin. And verse 8 and 9 declare, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And the same Lord who forgives is the same Lord who protects. Psalm 91 declares, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. Surely, he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, 
lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. And Psalm 121 declares, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. And Isaiah 43, verse 1 and 2 declare, But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. And the word of the Lord continues in Isaiah 59 and verse 19. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west, and his glory from the rising of the sun, when the enemy shall come in. Like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. And the Redeemer shall come to Zion, and unto them that turn from transgression in Jacob, saith the Lord. As for me, this is my covenant with them, saith the Lord. My Spirit is upon thee. And my words, which I have put in thy mouth, shall not depart out of thy mouth, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, nor out of the mouth of thy seed's seed, saith the Lord, from henceforth and forever. And never forget what David wrote in the Psalms what he declared in Psalm 23, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness. 
for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And Jude 24 and 25 declares, Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty dominion and power both now and ever Amen and the Lord who protects you is the one who will always hear and answer your prayer. Psalm 34, 17 declares, The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth, and delivereth them out of all their troubles. Psalm 37 and verse 4 declares, Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. And Psalm 145, verse 18 through 20 declares, The Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him, to all that call upon him in truth. He will fulfill the desire of them that fear him. He also will hear their cry and will save them. The Lord preserveth all them that love him, but all the wicked will he destroy. And in Isaiah chapter 30, verse 18 and 19, the word of God declares, And therefore will the Lord wait, that he may be gracious unto you. And therefore will he be exalted, that he may have mercy upon you. For the Lord is a God of judgment. Blessed are all they that wait for him. For the people shall dwell in Zion at Jerusalem. Thou shalt weep no more. He will be very gracious unto thee at the voice of thy cry. When he shall hear thee, he shall answer. And Isaiah 40, verse 28 through 31 declares, Has thou not known, has thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the Creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary? There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might he increaseth strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And Isaiah 65, verse 24 goes on to declare, And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. And Jeremiah 33 and verse 3 declares, 
call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things, which thou knowest not. And our wonderful Lord Jesus, in Matthew 7, verse 7 and 8, declared, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh it shall be opened. And in Matthew 18, verse 19 and 20, the Lord declared, And again I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. And in Matthew 21 verse 22 he said, in all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer believing, ye shall receive. And again in Mark 11:24 he said, Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. And in John 14, verse 13, the Lord also said, and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. And in John 16, 23, he declared, Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. And Paul the Apostle, in Philippians 4, 6 and 7 said, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And in 1 John 5, 14 and 15, we read, And this is the confidence that we have in Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, He heareth us. And if we know that He hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of Him. And remember, Psalm 89, 34, which declares, My covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that is gone out of my lips. What God has promised, He will keep and He will do always. And never forget what God the Father has said to us in Isaiah 55, 10 and 11. For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. And the Apostle Peter, in 2 Peter 1, verse 3 and 4, adds and says, According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption 
that is in the world through lust. Oh, His mighty promises are yours today. Remember, every promise in the scriptures belongs to you. Claim the promises of God today and receive them. For remember, in Psalm 18 and verse 2, David said, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. And in Psalm 27 we read, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in His temple. For in the time of trouble, He shall hide me in His pavilion. In the secret of His tabernacle, shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock, and now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. And Psalm 46 goes on to declare, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, there is a river the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. And verse 10 and 11 declares, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. And in Isaiah 30 and verse 15, we read this mighty promise. For thus saith the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest shall ye be saved in quietness and in confidence shall be your strength, and ye would not. Today, come to him. He's calling, and he's waiting. Quietness and rest, strength and glory belong to you. All you have to do is come to the Lord, and he will strengthen you and uphold you. In Isaiah 41, verse 10, he declared, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. And in verse 11, God continues and says, Behold, 
all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing, and they that strive with thee shall perish. And then verse 13, a mighty promise for you today. For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. And a mighty promise in verse 17 and 18, where the Lord says, When the poor and needy seek water, and there is none, and their tongue faileth for thirst, I, the Lord, will hear them. I, the God of Israel, will not forsake them. I will open rivers in high places and fountains in the midst of the valleys. I will make the wilderness a pool of water and the dry land springs of water. And Isaiah 42, 16 declares, And I will bring the blind by a way that they know not. I will lead them in paths that they have not known. I will make darkness light before them and crooked things straight. These things will I do unto them and not forsake them. And a mighty promise in Isaiah 44, 3 that says, For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thine offspring. That's God's mighty promise to you today. It is his desire to fill you afresh with his spirit and satisfy your soul. That is why in Isaiah 55 verse 1 through verse 3, he says to you, Ho, everyone that thirsteth, Come ye to the waters, and he that hath no money, come ye buy and eat. Yea, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Wherefore do ye spend money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which satisfieth not? Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good. And let your soul delight itself in fatness. Incline your ear and come unto me. Hear, and your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. And David, the king of Israel, knowing the Lord as he did, said in Psalm 4 and verse 8, I will both lay me down in peace and sleep. For thou, Lord, only makest me dwell in safety. And in Psalm 119, verse 165, David also said, Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. And God has promised you peace. Peace that passeth all understanding, Paul the Apostle said. And remember, Jesus the Master said to you in John 14 and 27, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Never be afraid. Remember, the Lord declared so many times, Fear not. Fear not. That's why Paul the Apostle in Philippians 4 and verse 6 declares, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, 
shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And Colossians 3.15 also declares, And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Never fear anything. Remember what the Lord said to you in Deuteronomy 31 verse 6. Be strong and of a good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. And then Isaiah chapter 12, verse 2 and 3 declares, Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also is become my salvation. Therefore, with joy shall ye draw water out of the wells of salvation. And verse 4 declares, And in that day shall ye say, Praise the Lord. Call upon his name. Declare his doings among the people. Make mention that his name is exalted. And never forget what Paul the Apostle said in 2 Timothy 1.7. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. That's why David in Psalm 55 and verse 2 said, Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. And Peter the apostle added in 1 Peter 5 and 7, Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. And I love what Isaiah 54, 10 says, For the mountains shall depart, and the hills be removed. But my kindness shall not depart from thee, neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed, saith the Lord, that hath mercy on thee. And this wonderful heavenly Father, that loves you, that continually forgives you when you come to him, that protects you daily and watches over you, also says to you in Isaiah 49, verse 15 through 17, can a woman forget her sucking child, that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Yea. They may forget, yet will I not forget thee. Behold, I have graven thee upon the palms of my hands. Thy walls are continually before me. Thy children shall make haste. Thy destroyers and they that made thee waste shall go forth of thee. God says to you today, I will never forget you. I have graven you on the palms of my hands. And your children, the ones who've been away from God, will come back. For verse 17 says again, Thy children shall make haste. They will come back. And thy destroyers, and the ones that have been wasting your life and your children's life are about to leave. For remember, the promise of God continues and says in Isaiah 49 and verse 25, But thus saith the Lord, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away. And the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. For 
for I will contend with him that contendeth with thee, and I will save thy children. He declares in his word that those who have been captives of the mighty, those who have been bound by the enemy, will be set free. And God Almighty will fight the enemy for you and save your children. And he goes on to promise you this glorious promise for you and your household. And he says in Isaiah 54, 13 and 14, And all thy children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of thy children. In righteousness shalt thou be established, Thou shalt be far from oppression, for thou shalt not fear, and from terror, for it shall not come near thee. And this is his promise to you today. And he continues by saying to you in Isaiah 59 and verse 1, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy, that it cannot hear. And I love what Paul the Apostle declares in 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 24. Faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. Never forget, the one who has given you these promises will never fail you. He's the God who keeps covenant. And one of these days, your eyes will see the Lord in his glory. For remember, that day is approaching and approaching quickly. For in Revelation chapter 21, beginning at verse 1, the word declares, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. And Revelation 22, verse 1 through 7 declares, And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb, in the midst of the street of it, 
and on either side of the river was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations, and there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him, and they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads, and there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. And he said unto me, These sayings are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show unto his servants the things which must shortly be done. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. And verse 12 to 14 declares, And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. Dear Jesus, I pray that today your promises will be sown deeply in our hearts. And I pray that we will do your commandments, that we might please you the rest of our days. Bless your people, I pray. Bless that one listening to this CD today, to this tape today. It's your name I pray, and only your name will be glorified in our lives always. Amen.